I need um, George Tech, yes, sir. What's up, folks? You're listening to the Line Sports Talk Podcast, Saturday edition. TL here. Joey and I are going to get into our picks. We're going to do it fast. We're going to have a little bit of fun with it. Hope everybody's doing well. It's week four of the NFL season already. Joe, you with me? Yes, sir. Happy Saturday, everybody. Yeah, it is, man. you got some college games going on. we got uh, week four of the NFL. Things are starting to take shape, I think. You're starting to figure out who's who and what's what. Uh, I don't know if any of it's any good. I know some teams out there are pretty bad. I know some teams yeah. are pretty good. So, I mean, let's let's fire away, man. Any news and notes? Anything going on around the league? I mean, we, the Josh Gordon thing, you know, we didn't really address too much. Uh, um, I, I, I hate the somber news. I really, I really do. Um, we have to start considering this guy. I mean, I'm not gonna I'm not gonna listen to oh, he's, it's, it's weed. It's all weed. No, 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 no. This there's something more sinister at play here. He is an addict, and something is going on. It is not. It is not just weed. There's no way. Yeah, no I'm, way. I'm with you. There's there's no way that this is is just marijuana. Now, if it is, then that's just crazy to me. Um, I, I just can't. I to... can't wrap my hands around that. How somebody is that dependent on weed that they will leave millions of dollars on the table just to smoke yeah, it. I can't. I can't buy into that. There's no way. A substance that's just not physically addictive. I, you know, it is emotionally addictive. A lot of things can be emotionally addictive. Uh, yeah, it's, yeah. A, it's, a, it's a shame because he's super talented. And, you know, when, when uh, Harbor Mike was on Thursday night, we touched on it a little bit. And he had made the comment that, you know, th- that guy was the best player on the field when he was playing. And, you know, if you go back and look to two years ago, he led, he led the NFL in receiving yards. This he is going to – this is a tragic story. It really is because the thought of how this is a Hall of Fame level talent, and I'm not. I'm, this is that's not an understatement. That's not overstating not. the matter. He is a Hall of Fame bona fide. Could go down as one of the greatest to ever do it. He had that kind of talent. Yeah, he. Was I mean, just look, look at the numbers he's putting up with the quarterback that he had. Could you imagine in some kind of world if this guy had Tom Brady flinging him the football? Yeah. I mean, this guy's putting up numbers with whoever the bum the Cleveland Browns had back there. I mean, they're um. Their like quarterback is like Whedon. flavor of the month. Maybe it wasn't Brandon Weed, but no, I, I, you're right. He was, he's an Does it matter? Talent. I mean, it, it, if it was if it wasn't Brandon Weed, see, we can't even remember. That's 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 the point. Yeah, no, you're right. He was um, a real special talent. It's a shame, you know. The kid's not dead. He's young enough to where I think that if he can go get his ducks in a row, maybe he has an opportunity to come back. You you can't keep professionally disappointing your 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 employer. No, and I, I saw I the Browns like, are going to. The Browns are going to cut ties with him, and you know what that means. Um, he's going to go a year, clean himself up. Uh, he's going to go become a member of the New England Patriots and end up yeah. in the Hall of Fame. And another uh, another thing the Cleveland Browns could shake their head at. That's probably yeah, what, no, it, since it, he got it, you know since he got cut by the Browns. It just seems like that would happen. That, that's how it would play out and happen to them. It did well, and that's you know, and and I hope for his sake it is how it plays out because uh, I just I can't help but thinking that. In, is it, you know, uh, Harvard Mike the night, as, as we talked about, he had, he had mentioned that, you know, maybe it's Molly, maybe it's cocaine, you know. And, and, you never know. It could be anything. Like, I just right. think the guy is, you know, an addict's an addict. Where I, I don't think, like, an addict just says, well, if you're an addict, I don't think the mentality is, okay, well, I'm just going to do cocaine. Nothing else. Just just cocaine. No, you do, right. you do anything you can get your hands on. And that's, that's, that's the thing about being an addict. You can have be. no self-control. Yeah. Can yeah. be. It's just, yeah. it's sad. So, you know, hopefully, yeah. Josh Moore or Josh Gordon is more than just a fantasy football commodity. Uh, he's a person, and hopefully the kid goes and gets some help before this gets real serious. I mean, it is real serious, but before it gets dangerous for him, it probably already is. Um, so uh, yeah, I wish it, the kid it must be. I it, it must be, and um, I, I feel bad for his family. I really do. Yeah, I do. Um, I do. Wish the kid the best. So moving on. Um, 
there the show must go on and the season must go on and absolutely and, uh, enough of this uh enough of the somber town now it's just time let's just let's keep it fun let's get into it uh to everybody yep. out there thursday night game was actually a terrible football game and i thought it would be uh yeah before, um, I, like i said shock of the century right there yeah no kidding before i had left i i had uh, i had closed the thursday night show with i really thought that cincinnati would win that game by about 13 points um and and they did. I think they won by fifteen, twenty two to seven. Not a good game. Uh the one touchdown that Tannehill dropped was just blown coverage. Somebody made a, a misread. I think the safety bit somewhere else over the middle and, and mm-hmm. Kenny Snill stills just snuck behind him. So um, Cincinnati yeah. very good. Miami very bad. Short week on the yeah. road. Take advantage of those Thursday nights when that happens. Agreed. I agreed. Miami is a terrible Miami's a terrible football team. No no doubt about it. They're they're gonna be they're picking in the top ten next year and I can almost bank yeah. on that. But and, um, and, and, I will say you know one thing about Cincinnati. They have What's to draft, that? They have to draft a quarterback. I don't know now. You you committed. You gave Ryan Tannehill a whole lot of cheese. Yeah, you made a mistake. Yeah, you did. I mean, you're you're stuck with him now. When you give a quarterback that contract, just like the Houston Texans are becoming to find out with Brock Osweiler, you're stuck. Yeah, you, you have are. to write it out. You're stuck. I mean, you made you made the choice. You panicked. You thought, okay. I don't know. Franchise quarterbacks don't come along every day. We have to, we have to pay him. It's, his contract's up. They put in a shitty situation, and they made the wrong move. It happens. But sometimes the gamble pays off. Sometimes it doesn't. You know, like it happens a, to, just like any kind of investment. With bad franchises, and Miami has become a very bad franchise. Yes, they have. Um, and I will say though, you know, we're talking about how bad the Miami Dolphins are. I'm going to say it's also good Cincinnati. I noticed one thing, and I've been saying this, you know, on on past shows. Vontez Perfect is a presence in the middle, yeah, and when really he's is. on, when he's on the field, he's intimidating. He's people have to mind him of anything. They have to know where he's at at all time. It's a distraction to the to the opposing offense. But he, if he's in the middle, that defense is very good, and that team has a, has a place has a chance to go somewhere. It is, you know, he's a very and I did watch I watched the first half of the game. He is a very instinctive, smart football player. Yes, he is. He just plays. He's just a little very over smart. the top sometimes. You got to get. You you love that emotion about him. You love his intensity, but you just you gotta you gotta find a way to bring it down sometimes. sometimes I mean, keep yeah. it at an even level. And you're right. You're right. And, I, and again, I uh, just a smart football player. I like the way he plays the game. He just he does change that second level of their defense when he's out on the field. He does yeah. change it. Uh, and they got yeah, some big a- hogs up front that help keep the uh, help keep the blockers off of him. And that boy, that makes all the difference. It was fun to watch. Um, especially I had the Bengals defense going in one league, and that was that was a nice thing. Yep, yep. And Ryan Tannehill, yeah, Ryan Tannehill's not the guy. We've, we, I think we know that now. He's just not no. the guy. Throws a, a pretty ball, just not, <laughs> just not, not very to accurate. anybody. Yeah, not, <laughs> uh, just not, just not a very good quarterback, and, and it's been enough time. So let's jump into it, man. Um, to everybody out there, fantasy football players, uh, game wagerers like ourselves. Uh, Keep in mind the Indianapolis Colts and the Jacksonville Jaguars are in London this weekend, and that game is 9.30 Eastern time. Uh, so keep in mind, that's an early a.m. This is breakfast with the NFL tomorrow for you guys out there. Don't forget to get all your stuff set. If you've got players, which you likely have players from the Colts, you likely have players from the Jaguars, uh, get those lineups plugged in and get those guys started or on your bench, whatever you want to do, because uh, that game is at 9.30 tomorrow morning. And don't forget to get your asses out there and get your picks in for your Sunday Swim Leagues. I know with our Sunday Swim League, everybody has been really great about hopping in after the first week, uh, and everybody can't wait to go out there and get your wagers in. I see my boy Joey Peeps is doing pretty well. Uh, you're um, I, well I, had a great, I had a great first week, a shitty second week, Sunday yeah, Swim. You're, you're hanging on, though, man. I mean, you flexed some muscles the other day, and, and that's pretty good stuff, dude. And, and I, I love playing Sunday Swim. That's just awesome. So get out there. You can start your leagues right now. You can start them for league, week four. You can start them week five, week six, week seven. If you're out, start a new league. Do it again. It's all free to use. Go enjoy Sunday Swim. Better your Sunday. Uh, so let's get right to the Indianapolis Colts and the Jacksonville Jaguars. The Jaguars are the home team in London. I think that is the biggest joke that the NFL could ever serve up. No, I, I think if, you're, if you want to expand your product overseas and try to get, um, you know, try to go international. Yeah. Do it in the Bahamas. <laughs> you, you, you gotta, you, well, you've got to give them a better game, too. The Indianapolis yeah. Colts and the Jacksonville Jaguars are both not very good. Well, let me and, throw a little, a little piece of international history knowledge at you. Gus Bradley has been the head coach of the Jacksonville Jaguars since, I believe, 2013. Um, Gus Bradley, this will be his fourth game in London. 
as the head coach of the Jaguars. And that's something. Why do they I wonder that? I mean, why do they why do they keep wanting to show the world the Jacksonville Jaguars? Ah, uh, you know, you're going to 2014, 2015, and now this year, three years straight. Three. Actually, no. I'm sorry. Every year they played in Jacksonville. I take that back. We're going. We're going back. They played in London. Uh, they played the 49ers in 2013. And there's a couple things I wanted to point out about these games. Uh, Gus Bradley is one and two um, in Jacksonville, blown out by the 49ers in, in 2013. Um, Dallas beat them up and doubled their total, 31 to 17, just about uh, in 2014. And then last year they had a little bit of a boat race with the Buffalo Bills, 34-31 final. Uh, these games are interesting, and I think that this might lean to to Gus Bradley, the Jacksonville Jaguars' favor. Look, they're 0-3. This team needs a win badly. This is a shitty home game because you do have this all kinds of travel. Uh, I think if, if, if you're Gus Bradley, though, you know how to do this. This is the fourth time, your fourth trip over there. You, you know how to do this. Uh, I don't know that that's going to be enough to put me on the Jaguars tomorrow. I certainly got burned with them last week against Baltimore at home. Uh, All right. Yeah, you did too. I, that's, a, that's a tough run. It really was. That game looks, looked pretty, pretty decent. But uh, Colts are laying two and a half. I mean, they're both on the road, but the Colts are not the home team. So they are the road, the road favorite in this scenario. And, and I don't know if Jacksonville's as bad as they look. Are they? Oh, uh, you know, I look back, I think last week, and here I've been saying this all along, it's, it's only a matter of time before the Baltimore Ravens are going to get exposed. I don't think that, I still am going to maintain, I don't think, I don't think they're as good as their record shows. I know right. I, I quoted the tuna the other day, you are what your record says you are. I don't think so in, Jack's, in Baltimore's case. I think it's a matter of time before they do get exposed. But in, in the meantime, they looked, Jacksonville looks like they're competitive. They, they, they took Green Bay to the wire at home. They took, um, they took Baltimore down. They should have beat Baltimore. They had that game. They had every, every way, shape, or form to win that game. But then they go on the road to San Diego oh, and, just get, and just get embarrassed. Um, There's a lot of bad turnovers in the Baltimore-Jacksonville game. So I don't know, I don't know yet. I am going to stick to my – I'm going to stick to it. I thought about this earlier. I'm going to say the Jacksonville Jaguars are going to are gonna get the nod in this game in London. I, I, the Colts' defense is terrible. It's a terrible defense. It is. It's not like Jacksonville sets the world on fire, but I think I think you're going to see. I think the hot play in this. What's the over on this game? Do you know? Forty nine, and I'm I'm with you on that thought. I think the, um, it, it's pretty high though. I, mean, I I like them to score a ton of points in this game because that's yeah. I, be I, I would I would not see anything defensive in this game, especially with these with these two teams, um, especially the way they both like to air it out. Um. Yeah, I'm going to roll with the Jaguars. I'm, I'm, gonna, I'm not saying I, I don't think they're a good foot They're that good, but I don't think they're going 0-4. I'm going to go with, I'm gonna right. go with the yeah. Jags. I think, I think you're right. I think you made some good points there, and I think, I think Gus needs this. If, he does if Gus loses, he, he cannot I'm start 0-4. I'm taking Jacksonville in the 2.5 as well. Um, here's another one that, that, believe this or not, but the Cleveland Browns getting 7.5 in Washington. I'm just going to cough it up right away. I'm taking the Browns to cover. Hugh Jackson is putting together a team that is competing. They're competing. Oh, look, I, I know I, Philly whipped their ass, um, and it, it would be difficult if, if Philly if also were, put it on the Steelers. So they sure I mean, did. They sure did. And if, if 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 I'm in the desert and I'm walking up to the booth, I'm not laying anything on the Cleveland Browns plus seven and a half. But for the sake of this show and doing our picks, I'm gonna take the Browns in the seven and a half. That's a lot of points in the NFL. I think. I think Vegas. I think that's a trap. I think Vegas is setting you. I think. I think they're setting it up for people to take the Browns, being what they did with the ten, being a ten point dog in Miami last week, and they covered. Yeah. I don't think it's. Yeah, I think. I think they're going to get smoked this Sunday. Do you? I think the. I, yes, I think at Washington. I think they're going to get smoked. I think Vegas has it set up that way. I think it's a trap. I like. Um, I like Washington to win this one big. I'll take Washington minus if it's seven. Especially now, I see it's if it's at seven and a half. Yeah. That that. That that tells me because I've seen it earlier in the week at ten, so that tells me everybody's betting the Browns. Did you really? So, it opened up. Yes, I, knew it was, I saw it at nine. I, I saw it open up at nine. So if you saw it at ten, um, yeah, the line definitely shifted some, uh, and that's a so, lot of movement. On, on I don't think Washington's a very good team. But I, I don't think, think so either. But I but I don't. I'm, I'm not. I'm not. A, I'm not going to roll with you. And um, I'm also saying the Browns are not a. Browns are really, really not a very good. But not yeah, a very good team. I know right that, about that. Um, I just I want to touch on on the balls in the NFL and in in the nuggets you got to have to lay these kind of bets. And, and, and Miami I, is a ter- my I know they went to Miami and competed last week, but Miami's terrible. Miami's so, terrible. You're right. You're right. I'm so, still 
for the sake of it, I'm taking Cleveland in the seven and a half. Probably won't be 